everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to do the longer version of the short that I uploaded a day or two ago on how to start a fire with a ferro rod. There is certainly a lot more information that uh, I can share with you, a lot more tips and tricks to make it easier, uh, especially a little more beginner friendly. So let's uh, hit the intro and again, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you on the flip side. Alright, welcome back. This is the aftermath of the short yesterday. I got some new dryer lint. And uh, this, again, once you think you got enough kindling, you're going to want to get double. This is not, this is not enough. Um, anyway, I got my knife here. It's got a 90 degree spine. got my ferro rod. Now, number one, you want a, you want a firm base. Uh, nothing's more frustrating than being down here trying to get everything to put together and having your base wobble around and things fall between the logs, etc. Got the airplanes and helicopters out today. I can hear them everywhere. Uh, so you want a firm base. Now it doesn't necessarily matter that that base is perfectly dry. I've lit these right on the top of the snow, but you do need something to keep your dry lint out of the snow. It's fairly absorbent, and uh, it can pick up whatever you know moisture from the from the ground or from the snow. So, and then you want to lay on top of the snow or on top of what your your the ground uh, a layer of. What I do, half rounds, so chunks of wood, split them in half, lay them um, round side down or up, fill in the blanks with or the uneven spots with with twigs and whatnot, anything to keep give yourself kind of a firm foundation. And then the next thing, of course, you want a something dry to hold your 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 dryer lint or even a cotton ball, whatever you've chosen to to accept your spark. And in this case, uh, I'm, I'm using a leaf because right next to me is a tree or a bush and there's maple leaves all over in it and they're up off the ground, which makes them nice and dry. Anyway, so once you got that established, get everything prepped. Put everything right within grasp. Um, if you're right-handed, don't put things on the left because you'll reach over the top and burn yourself. I've done that. Everybody's done that who's been outdoors enough. So I stick things over to one side and like it, like I said before, I split them into two groups, or I'll have something adjacent to, uh, perpendicular to my whatever is in this case the dryer lint, so that when it ignites, I can set stuff over the top without it going down and smothering it. One other, one other quick tip with the dryer lint: if you're, if it's, if you don't have a lot and it's not, you know, if it's not, this is plenty right here, but if it's not holding a flame well enough. Uh, again, you want to introduce some air pockets into it, but you can take just, this is a little like a five hour survival candle. Um, just take the spine of your knife and just make these shavings and put a few inside with your, your dryer lint. And then when your dryer lint catches, these things will melt and it'll extend your flame significantly. I mean, I'm talking a, a minute or two where this dryer lint by itself will burn out in 30 seconds or so. So we'll stick some of these in there. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't even hardly make a dent in your candle. So yeah, I keep this in my camera bag of all things. I always have my camera bag when I go out. So I get that, I'll put them in there. I'll kind of mash them in just to keep them where I want them. And then again, air, air is essential. Dryer lint is dense, so it keeps the air out. Now, the, the next thing you want to do is, come here, fire rod, get your ferro rod. And there's a lot of different ways to the most popular way, the most wrong way I've seen is people doing this. And what that does, this is what I used to do. You can see that that is dished out right here, but the tip is hardly used uh, and nothing else is used. So um, doing, doing that, while it will ignite things on fire, you're just gonna carve a hole in there. And if you're cold, um, you're gonna be slamming your knuckles into the ground. It, it's just not fun. It, the best way to do is to take about, hold your thumb and your knife or striker about an inch or two um, from the tip. Uh, going more is not necessary and a wider stroke means that your sparks go further. They, they fly everywhere. So what I do is I'll take and hold it like this about an inch or two and then firmly press into your ferro rod and just go forward. You don't need to do anything fancy, just go forward like that. 
Um, you can pull the rod away. Not ready. A little head ahead of time. Okay, you can pull the rod away, but what I found is it often leaves the curls stuck to the spine of my knife. And if you're choked up on there, they can come down and burn your index finger. That's not pleasant because these things burn at five, nearly 5,000 degrees. So you don't want to do that. Uh, give yourself some space and a firm forward stroke. And we'll do that now. And uh, I'll show you. It usually only takes like, like you saw, just one. As soon as it touches, it ignites. And now your dry base will also ignite. Now take your knife and put it someplace that it, you're not going to bump into. And then again, I haven't prepared this quite right, so I'm going to hold it a bit up with my hand, letting it down a bit at a time. And that, that's really it. There's really not much more to it than that. Uh, again, you'll want everything all prepared beforehand. I'm now bathing in smoke. Um, but that, that is how you do it. That's, that's the best way I find to do it. It works wet, dry. As long as your tinder's good and as long as the dryer lens good, it'll work really well. And uh, yeah, that's how we do it. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, like and subscribe. And I will uh, I'll see you on the next, next adventure and uh, what should be soon. I've, I've made a lot of time in my schedule for doing this now, put some real work into this. And yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye.